Our service begins on the first page of your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also in you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they, are, when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward, toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him, which fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and I visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This, amongst other things, is Christ the King Sunday. The Sunday we celebrate with all embracing authority of Christ as King and Lord of all the cosmos. That's a mouthful, isn't it? And you know what? It's a pretty recent invention. I searched through history and expected to find that it had been in our lectionary since the beginning of our prayer book in the 1500s, or perhaps at the time of the publication of the King James Bible in 1625, but no, this came about when Pope Pius XI started his celebration in 1925. That recent. I thought it was a joke or just plain wrong. But oh no, Pius was concerned, you see, that the secular world wasn't paying enough attention to the humble Jesus. And what better way to get attention than to celebrate his kingliness? Now, I know that's not a real word, but it seems to convey the thought. But there was more to it than just that. Pope Pius was trying to remind Christians that their allegiance was to their spiritual ruler in heaven as opposed to the earthly leaders of the day. Specifically, he was trying to make a distinction between Christ and the fascist leader of the day, Benito Mussolini. He placed this celebration at the end of the church year, and yes, this is the last Sunday of the church calendar to show that Christ will reign not now among the nations but at the end of time you know humans have had such a weird relationship with monarchs there have been good ones and bad ones sometimes we've been happy with them and sometimes not America used to have a really negative view of kings the extreme effort to break away from an unjust king and form our own nation may have had something to do with that. Although many of us have turned into sentimental royalists now, 
I don't miss an episode of The Crown. <laughs> but here, we are discussing Jesus and celebrating him as a king. And we put it in earthly terms because we humans can't really grasp heavenly concepts of leadership. It can sound like heavy-handed, holdover patriarchal dominance from the past, and yet it makes perfect sense when you realize that it was a response to the growing fascist movement in Europe. And to some, it can seem strangely contemporary as we witness fascists like leaders around the globe and maybe even some closer to home. Now I realize that Christ the King Sunday sounds pretty good. It certainly rolls off the tongue better than Christ our democratically elected leader Sunday. <laughs> but all joking aside, despite the success and value of a democratic form of government for secular affairs, the kingdom of heaven is not a democracy. God does not take opinion polls, nor can he be recalled or voted out of office. That's a very good thing. We're not dealing with an unjust, petty, ego-driven dictator, but a loving and just king who is both God and man. There are Christ the King windows in many, many churches, often high over the altar. Christ resplendent and in triumph with a golden bejeweled crown on his head. I wish we had one here at St. Anne's, actually. They look great, and they're oh so inspiring. But if this one image is the only image we have of Christ, well, then we are limiting God and putting him in a beautiful box with a crown on top. To take the lid off that box, I want to speak about the transforming nature of Christ. Everything about him was radical and different. Jesus was shaking up the status quo on every level. Jesus was standing against the empire and what that leadership looked like, not aligning himself with it. Now remember the whole first shall be last and the last shall be first stuff? I try to remind us of that as often as possible. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus is giving us a heaping dose of just that. I want each of you to take the bulletin home with you today. Do not throw it in the trash can back there. Because I want you to reread the gospel lesson today in the silence of your own home. And just listen to what Jesus may be saying to you. Christ is about transforming not just our thoughts and concepts, but about transforming our whole lives. Each of us, regardless of whether we recognize it or not, or in the process of transformation. Nothing, not our lives, not our relationships, not our jobs, not our church, nothing stays the same forever and ever. Remember that. Jesus' kingship is not an earthly one after all. It does not involve domination or control over others. It doesn't diminish or take away rights from anyone. To the contrary, this kingship is the radical, all-powerful compassion and love of Jesus seeking justice for all. <clears throat> so perhaps at a time nearly a hundred years ago when so much of the world was moving towards fascism, you can see why P Pope Pius wanted to remind everyone 
just exactly who our true king is then and now. Christ the King Sunday, new as it is, is just a good reminder today as it was when it was first instituted by good old Pope Pius. I'd like to end today with a prayer. Let us all pray. Most gracious God, who in Jesus of Nazareth showed us an alternative to the kings, queens, and emperors of history, help us to revere and emulate Jesus' leadership, to love and to seek justice for all people. Help us to recognize the true grandeur and life-changing power based in loving you and all our neighbors. In Christ Jesus, with you and the Holy Spirit, may we co-create a world ruled not through domination, but in that radical and all-powerful compassion and love that you have shown each of us. Amen. You would all please stand as you are able. And turning to page four in your bulletin, join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for our saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins again. God and our neighbor. 
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and the thought of your great need, by what we have done, and by what we have not done to us. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our enemies as ourselves, we are truly sorry. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. So good to see you all. Please come back. Have a seat. Have a seat, everyone. Just a few announcements. Um, like I said, I'm an optimist. Uh, next week is Advent 1. I believe we're going to be here, um, able to worship together. Uh, it's, it's the first Sunday of the uh, church calendar year. Everything changes. Everything shifts. It's going to be wonderful. Um, uh, and we are adding a service. We are adding back the Celtic service. Um, I was able to have two back in Lent before we shut down in March. Uh, it's a beautiful contemplative service. Uh, very quiet. There is no sermon. Um, there is a Eucharist. Um, I, I lead you in chant-like prayers. Um, and uh, it's just a wonderful way to get our hearts and minds ready for uh, Christmas and for the coming of um, Jesus into our world. So I, I offer that up to you. Uh, it may be the only one we have on uh, this coming Sunday, depending on uh, when things may or may not get shut down. So I hope to see you then. Um, by now, you guys should have all received your pledge cards um, uh, in the mail. If you did not, there are pledge cards in the pews. I ask, yes, thank you, Judy, for holding that up. Uh, uh, when you come forward, I see some people have already done it. They've already put their envelopes in the alms basin. Uh, as you're coming forward, you can drop them there or, or, or mail them uh, and get them into us. But we appreciate you doing that. Um, I will be having some more, more testimonials in coming weeks. Um, uh, at announcement time to uh, continue the process of uh, stewardship here. Um, the office will be closed Thursday and Friday. We're going to close down a little bit early on Wednesday for Thanksgiving. Um, so if you're coming next Sunday, um, please get your reservations in early this week. Episcopalians like to s slide into home base at that last minute with those reservations. But this week you're going to have to do it by Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So, um, uh, please do that. Uh, let Diane and I know that you're going to be here. Hope to see you on Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Speaking of Thanksgiving, look at that beautiful um, setup that Abby Fleming did for us today. It's just gorgeous back there on the altar. I'm so impressed. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, reminding us before we jump into Advent that there is actually another holiday called Thanksgiving in the West. So enjoy it. Eat a lot of turkey. Be safe. I hope um, you're having small celebrations this year, as I am. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. This is the Lord's table, and everyone is welcome to receive communion from it. However, if you would prefer to come forward for a blessing, when you hit the little stickers on the floor in the standing spot, please just cross your arms, and I will be happy to give you a blessing. I also have gluten-free wafers. If you need one, just let me know. Our service continues on page six in your bulletin. If you would all please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. 
Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are Lord of the world. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, and the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We offer our, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ. 
service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found at the very bottom of page 7 in your bulletin. If you would all please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember that the world is far too dangerous of a place for anything but truth, and far too small for anything but love. And now, my friends, go in peace, and may the blessings of God be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. If you would all please remain standing for the final hymn.